Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom, and I survived taking the day off yesterday. I got soaked in the rain. Yeah, it even got worse after I edited the, ended the intro video. Yes, I didn't get to chat that long. I mean, yap that long, okay? All right. But today's a different day. The wind died down, and it acted normal. Look at the flags. They survived, okay? Except for the Canadian flag, the flag exercise. I'll have to go over there and untangle them. But that was just brutal. Five days of hell. It was like a marriage. The wind never died down. Unreal. So we got a slight breeze today. Oh, we're not sure what we and this, me and the staff are going to do today. It's Saturday. If we had a real job, we'd have a day off, eh? Okay. All right. This morning at six o'clock. Yes, I had to get up for a pee. It was plus 14 Celsius, but feels like plus 14. And on the yo-yo scale, plus 57, but feels like plus 57. Yes, the good car. We've discussed it. I think it was the 55 Chevy truck that had the nice lines, too. I don't think the 57 had the lines. Okay, leave a message or a comment or whatever in the screen below. Ooh, I'm talking like a YouTuber. Yes, because I'm retired and that's my only income other than empty beer cans. All right. And Amazon has my 19th book of my writing career, which is the ninth book in the Winter Road series, better known as Blew It Up. Yes, that's when we blew the rear end up in the screaming Ford right there towing a V8 powered Mac. Yes, two V8 trucks together because V8 engines were popular back in the day. Now everything is a six-cylinder inline to go zoom, zoom. Yeah, they don't sound too good too. They just kind of boom, boom, whatever. Okay, so Amazon has the ebook for free from June 17th to the 21st which is five days in Amazon world, four days on Sesame Street. So please enjoy the book. I'm giving this stuff away for free. Yeah, go read the book, enjoy. And also too, you want the ebook because it has the colored photos for those people that are not colorblind like me. Yes, yeah, minor detail. So if you buy the print book, there are black and white photos because the cost of printing color is unreal. The cost of everything are going up. It's just unreal. You almost have to go on welfare to live these days. You can't afford to live and work and all that kind of stuff. Al Bundy was the last of the ones that could have a 9 to 5 job sell selling shoes and a nice house in the suburbs. Yes, and treat the kids good. But he also drove the old Dodge. He didn't go out and buy a $90,000 Ford. Yeah, to drive around, wave at the ladies. Oh, that's the Ford F-150s, okay? All right. So yesterday in Wilderness, Alaska, we found this picking glass, okay? That's strange, okay? I don't know what color it is. I'm colorblind, but look at the mounting bracket, okay? Like, that's pretty lame-ass. Like, I don't think that's off a cat or an IH cat or anything like that because it's too lame, all right? And also, too, the bolt is kind of worn down, so maybe it was rubbing the tire or something. This might be off the Buick or MG or something like that. It's totally different, okay? It's not something, uh, how would you say, industrial to be up here in the Great White North, where everything was opened up with machines. Also, too, we found the original Hoor Lure. Yeah, it's Old Spice. And it even has the little top in there, eh? Yeah. So the finding that other one there, the palm olive aftershave, okay? It was formed in the glass. This one here is a press-in thingy. I don't know what color it is, but that's pretty good. We're finding lots of stuff. But we got soaked yesterday, me and the dogs. Yeah. It was okay in the bush because the trees were, how would you say, umbrellowing, 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 oh, God, here's that English language that I just brutalized. Umbrello. Umbrella. Umbrelling. Oh, something like that. It was covering us so we didn't get wet. It's when we came out of the bush to walk to the kingdom, that's when we got soaked. And the wind was blowing the rain. It was just unreal. It was like hurricane force, like being on the East Coast, you know, in the ocean spray and stuff. It was terrible. It was dramatic. But we did get some videos edited yesterday, and I did the voiceover. Okay, and the best part about the voiceover 
is the computer couldn't play the video back as I chatted. Yeah, even it went into a little stupid mode and went slow and it had to load up. How can you lo not load up a video? It's in your little brain. All you have to do is play it. It's not like you're downloading it from like uh, the Playboy channel or something like that. Like, hello. So I'm sitting there, uh, ooh, uh, uh, waiting for it to go. And I left up enough big enough spaces that I could remove the spaces to get everything to line up sort of thing, eh? But I credit Vodka for helping me. Okay, so we did that. I couldn't believe it. Unreal. So the voiceovers, I just play the video. I yap away. I mean, I talk away narrating. I try to include the details as if you're from Florida, right? So if I go to Florida, I hope the people down there explain life to me. Like, why is everything air conditioned? Why is the bank even a drive through because it's too hot to walk from your car to go in the building yeah i remember florida that was the most expensive uh nookie i ever had chasing that lady oh my that was unreal flying back and forth to florida to canada and stuff like that whoa the things i did for nookie oh but that was when i was young oh now i'm famous at living at the end of the world yes and I write books about women. Yeah, where all my money went too. All right, I better go. We got a big day planned today as long as the wind, the wind doesn't bother us. I don't know. I'm beginning to doubt I can actually move to Wyoming. It's too windy. I need to go to a place where there is no wind. Yeah, I wonder where that is. All right, I better go. Here comes the boss. Okay, Saturday morning in the kingdom and the wind has died down. Five days of that Wyoming wind or Saskatchewan wind if you're in Canada was unreal. So we're planning this. So the smoke is supposed to start rolling in on the weather advisory. So we're going to go for a little quad ride. All right, look at the flags. They're looking so good for the first time in five days. Okay, we're down at the original train station here in Whoville, better known as Lynn Lake, okay? We don't like using the name Lynn Lake because of copyright and all that kind of crap, so we've always called it Whoville. So back in the day, the train station was on these pillars here, all right? And the frost has pushed these pillars up, and the demise of the train station here was a front-end loader came down the hill with no brakes and smashed into the building, okay? So that was the train station here, which served its purpose till the 70s, I think it was. And then in the background, you can see the loading ramp, okay? And this is one where the, you drive up the end, and the rail car is parked right here, okay? So you can actually have end access. We loaded many equipment on that, and the side loading ramp is farther down. So this is the original cement of the train station when it was actually a building. And then after the via, or the front end loader destroyed the building, they put a via, tra uh, via train station right here for the passengers, which was an ATCO trailer or a mobile home that served its purpose over the years. So in 2014, we were helped remove the rail lines here over a tax dispute. So then in 2014, we also cleaned it up too. So we picked up all the track spikes, you name it. So we're quite confident in driving down the tracks today to film some more items. So that was the north end of the tr trains. That's where it ended. And down here is the tracks heading back to the Paw, or Sheraton as they call it. All right, let's continue. Okay, we're south of the mine site or the mill area. So this track on the left right here, that's where all the ore cars would be spotted because they'd be loading the concentrate out. And on my right right here, that's the line where the trains came from the Paw, okay? So this is the mine tailings over here, which was covered in 2010. And same as the mine buildings over here were knocked down and the sand and everything covers the cement. So the town of Whoville is just over here. Yes, this is an orange wasteland. That's why we stopped down here so it doesn't look that bad, okay? But the whole idea of this video is to show the trackage and everything like that, not the environmental mess or anything which we're fully aware of. So we're gonna head back this way. And this is the heading down the tracks here. So we're going to head, head south, as they say. And it is windy. We'll be in the bush here right away. Okay, seems how this trip wasn't really planned on a Saturday morning, but the wind went down. We're going to stop here at this accident site. This is where we think the wooden boxcar came from back in the day. All right, so we got it here in the kingdom. It's been here for 27 years since I've been here, and it was here long before that. Used as a storage shed, and we moved it over here and fixed it up a little better. We're going to clean off these cables off the side here, 
but we have a problem. We have two nesting birds in there, so I'll wait for the nesting season to end and the young ones fly away. And then we can clean up all this stuff here so it looks better in the pictures. Maybe get some paint to paint off, paint over the hole in the door. Okay, so we'll put the accident scene right in here. Okay, we're at kilometer, no, mile 183 if my notes are correct. Okay, we're looking straight south and this is what we call dead man's curve, all right? I'll slowly turn this way, we have a slight breeze. Okay, all right, so we call this dead man's curve. I don't know if we can see, but we're quite surprised at how much the ballast or track ballast has eroded from the tracks, okay? Because it's been 10 years since we've been down here or whatever. And now when we ride it with the quad, it's bouncy, bouncy. So this is a tight corner. I think the staff uh, took a picture of the 25 mile an hour speed limit sign back there. And as you can see, the ties have the derailment cut marks, okay? That means the truck has jumped or the wheel, the truck the, or the wheel has jumped and it's cutting the ties. Okay, so on over here, we have a fair amount of railroad debris, okay? Everything has been burnt over the years. You know, because that's how they cleaned up everything back in the day. I'm not sure if I can walk and talk at the same time, but over here is some more. Okay, so we call this Dead Man's Curve and we're looking north. Okay, there's some more debris down there. We picked out all the heavy steel back in 2013, 14, I think it was. I think it was 14 we did it. But also, too, you got to remember over the years with modern equipment, this curve has been leveled out a bit more or changed it drastically so that there's no derailments, okay? And as you can see here, the ties with the derailment marks on it. All right, so I'll walk a little farther north. Okay, this is looking east, and this here seems to be household garbage or whatever, or inventory or supplies that was in the boxcar and stuff when it derailed. So that's what we figured it was, that's what it's there. But then most of it is burnt. Okay, a little farther north up the tracks here, looking north, and you can see these ties are cut pretty good here. And we figured down in this ditch on this side, the way the bush has been removed and everything, we think the rail cars went in here, okay? They were all lying up in here. So we think that's where the wooden box car came from because it's nothing to drag it out of there in the frozen ground, okay? Or it could have been on the other side of the tracks on this side because that's what uh, the old timers were telling me that the box car was in a derailment just south of town and they just dragged it across the frozen ground to the kingdom and use it as a storage shed. So that's the joys of here. All right, let's continue our quest. Okay, I'm looking north to the start of Dead Man's Curve, okay? So I'll scroll this way, and the wind's not too bad here, but this will show you how much vegetation is growing up in the last 10 years, okay? So when we took the line out or the tracks out in 2013 and 14 or whatever it was, I think it was 13, I'll have to look at that. But this was pretty, pretty good and we could, uh, Go up and down here no problem now the vegetation is growing up okay so their last train down this track was 2003 so then in 2013 i think we took the tracks out 2014 we cleaned up all the spikes tie plates and anything the fellow missed okay we're at the big steel bridge which crosses the lynn river yes and the river is about normal heights for this time of year okay we'll look down here Mile marker 182.6, and it's a fairly recent bridge they put in. It's not one of the original ones when they built the line in 1950s, okay? But it has dropped in the center there quite a bit since the last time I was here. Okay, I'm not sure the date which they changed out this bridge here. Okay, but you can see the original wooden piers or pilings right here. I don't know if we can see it. Okay, I'm going to try and walk and talk at the same time without a beer in my hand. All right. Get down to the river here. It's been quite a few years since I was down here. All right. So the river's about the normal height of it. You can tell by the heights of the rocks sticking out. But this is a nice structure they put in. Nice good steel and everything. Uh, but they never painted it. And I don't see any dates on it or anything like that if I remember right. But as you can see the center pile, pillar or pilings or whatever has dropped to quite a bit. And you got the old telegraph wires, poles, every now and then on the line here. All right. Okay, it's quite amazing when they build something, the pile driver pushes it in. We all got rocks up here and everything, so the beams turn. 
So then they were able to bolt it to the flanges or to the channel iron there or the H I beams and it just twisted. Just look at that. Those guys had power back then. It's amazing what they did and it's still around today. Okay, on the west side of the bridge, and this is the Lynn River, it's flowing that way towards Alden Lake. And there's the plaques over there. So maybe I'll see if the staff can venture out and take a look. Okay, now the wind's gotten up. I'm on the bridge here looking west. All right, we'll scroll this way. Okay, I can't cover the Lily Tomlin mic. ST 1979 is welded there. And we'll take a look to see if we can see the plaque here. I don't know if we can see the plaque. It'll be upside down, but we'll include a picture at the end screen. Okay, the fellow who took the bridge or the rails off or whatever of this line here, he wasn't a very reputable fellow. He didn't even use his real name, so everything was uh, coded. So he thought he could just drag the rails out or whatever. So they unbolted them off there, pulled the spikes, and unbolted them, and I pulled them in 30, I think it was 3,300 foot lengths, I think it was. I used the D6 cat, okay? And the cat was underwater for three years. So I just drove along, usually at night, because it was cooler. And these are the marks on the ties from the rail, the 3,300 feet in length being pulled along. So it just skidded right along. So back at Dead Man's Curve, the track, the rails would never pull. They would fall down on the inside of the corner and stuff like that. So we know at Dead Man's Curve there, those were derailment marks from, from when the train derailed, okay? And we also know that for a fact when we were traveling the rail line in the high, high rail and on the VH cars and stuff like that because we went up and down this line to Lori River Hydro Dam to do logging and stuff down there back in the day. That's the quad quit. We think it's the fuel pump. Yeah, we cleaned that up after it burned. Okay, that's why you own two quads. One is broken while the other one's running, and then when you get them both fixed, they one breaks. So this one, we think the fuel pump quit on it, and so we had to tow it home. See the strap there, right there? Okay, I think we're done for the day. We got enough film footage, so now I can drink professionally. So let's call it a day. Let's go drink some beer, and we'll talk to you guys later.